Hi, I'm Julio Sainz along with Mauricio Riveros. Today on Be Inspired, we'll meet Miguel Heredia, who works sending satellites into space. You will be inspired. Celebrating leaders in Rochester's unique and vibrant business community, we'll meet entrepreneurs whose passion and perseverance have helped push through life's challenges. Join us as we share their stories and journeys to success. It's time to be inspired. Miguel, thank you very much for being inspired. A show that we have uh, developed to interview interesting people. And today really is an interesting show, Julio. We have the honor to have Miguel, who comes from Bolivia, Miguel Heredia. Welcome. Thank you for being in Be Inspired. So tell us a little bit, who is Miguel Heredia? Well, I'm a Bolivian engineer. I studied telecommunications engineering. Uh, well, I was born in Sucre, Bolivia. Uh, then when I was 17, after finishing school, I moved to, to Denmark. I worked there for one year and a half. Then I came back to Bolivia and studied telecommunications engineering. After my, I got my degree, I worked a little bit. Uh, and then I moved to France again to carry out my, my master uh, degree in uh, space communication systems. And currently, I'm working in the first Bolivian uh, space program. That is wonderful. The first Bolivian program for uh, space, and the, you guys just launched the, the satellite, one of, I think it's the first satellite uh, probably a few years ago. So yep. tell me uh, what is happening in technology and innovation. This is very exciting for develop for countries that are in development. So tell us what is happening there. Uh, well, the satellite was launched like five years ago. Uh, it has been an a important milestone for Bolivia because it was the first time that Bolivia entered into space. And that brought a lot of uh, capacity building academically and technically as well. Amazing, very interesting. Uh, what um, a satellite like a satellite like that is such a milestone as you mentioned. What is what kind of what is it used for? Well, there are uh, different types of satellites. Mm -hmm. uh, there are observation satellites for Earth observation, uh, weather satellites, uh, and communication satellites and uh, GPS uh, satellites uh, like GNSS. Uh, the Bolivian satellite is uh, a communication satellite, so its its mission is to communicate uh, remote uh, places in Bolivia and bring to those places uh, uh, satellite television, uh, radio, and internet. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. So you're opening up communications to areas that had never had that before. Yes, exactly. We are communicating the people that never was never communicated yeah basically amazing that's powerful because uh, you know i am from bolivia too and i know how difficult it was for remote areas to even receive the news and and now be able to connect with internet and be able to do a lot of those things now with this satellite you will be able to create that interaction that connection now one of the challenges that I see, and I saw a picture actually, the debris, the problems of the junk that we are throwing out mm -hmm. in the space. Uh, what's, what, what the technology is going on, what they are doing to fix this challenge? Oh, well, there are many projects uh, coming and many, uh, many enterprises are devising uh, these projects. Um, well, the first one is for geosatellites, for satellites that are in a geostationary orbit that is uh, 35,000 kilometers away from Earth. Uh, satellites uh, save, or the operator of the satellite saves some uh, propellant to one last maneuver, right? So it takes the satellite to a graveyard, to a grave orbit mm. uh, to, to, to remain there until the satellite is it's, uh, it's gone. Uh, so, we save an uh, amount of propellant and we send it back to the, to the grave orbit. However, for constellations, for an array of, of satellites uh, orbiting uh, low, uh, low orbits, that's a, a big issue mm -hmm. because uh, w you cannot 
uh, maneuver one last time because you could uh, you could uh, how can I say it uh, strike another satellite mm -hmm. that is uh, far away. Mm -hmm. So many companies are trying to, for example, send a constellation of satellites of three satellites, for example, and fire a net that could uh, take all these satellite uh, useless satellites. Mm away from 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 earth mm. so that way would be interesting but uh, currently none of those have been tested and and are under development mm -hmm. yeah and uh, one of the things you mentioned that the satellite that you launched uh, does is provide internet access to some of these areas yep. what do you s do you see that as the future of internet access for everybody where we won't have you know, in, in, in our country or at, at home, I have, you know, my satellite, my internet coming in through a, through a high-speed cable. Do you, do you see that eventually folks could just get their internet access through satellites? Uh, yeah, but uh, it's difficult to compete with uh, conventional, uh, I see. With conventional uh, technologies like uh, 4G, for example, and the upcoming 5G. Because... Uh, that technology advances very quick and satellite not too much and sending a satellite it's very expensive mm. and more expensive than uh, settling a, a, a 5G network for example a 4G network satellite uh, technology is growing very fast and uh, we can reach some of the uh, speed some internet speeds that uh, conventional uh, networks can. Mm -hmm. uh, but I as I mentioned before, it's more expensive to launch a satellite. Yeah. Than put up a cell phone tower. Yeah, than put up a cell phone tower, yeah. Mm. That's interesting, and for me, it's a very fascinating topic because I, I think the more we can integrate, the world is, is becoming more in many ways, right? And, and it's a very good question that Julio is, is, is putting is hey, the internet and, and, and satellite and all that, but uh, what is the future? Because I think, uh, you know, we have the challenge of environmental concerns that people have. Uh, we have the challenge of cost, uh, but at the same time, we have a very aggressive effort for enterprises to really have the satellite technology up there and moving. So how we balance that and how we operate that? What is the perspective for a developed country like Bolivia to decide what is the best direction to go on that? Uh, I would say that is capacity. Mm. Uh, we've been looking and we've been working actually to uh, in a new uh, satellite program uh, and uh, establishing the, the specifications for the new satellite. Mm. And uh, the, the main uh, idea is, is capacity uh, to get to uh, speeds compared to the conventional networks and uh, coverage, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, a satellite, uh, the most important in satellites is the capacity, the, the, the space capacity mm -hmm. and the, the coverage. Mm -hmm. So uh, nowadays, the manufacturers, the satellite manufacturers, are working as well in constellations. Uh, however, constellations are even more expensive because you use thousands of satellites, like OneWeb, for example. This uh, this company that is uh, from from it's from America, from US, uh, and in the investment is very high. And for a developing country, that's not possible. So we are looking to launch another HTS satellite, the high throughput satellite, uh, with the more capacity than, than, than the current satellite and with uh, bigger coverage. Uh, however, the coverage is a bit different than the one we have now because uh, HTS satellites are um, focused on spot beams, not in, in a huge coverage. So you you cover a certain geographical area with uh, spot beams, with little mm. spot beams, making the, 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 the system more flexible mm. because you can put more traffic in certain little area areas. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And 
You mentioned these constellations of satellites that companies are launching. We have weather satellites, the communication, GPS. I know space is pretty big, but are we getting anywhere close to having too many satellites? Are we going to reach a capacity, a limit? Yes, of course. In a geostationary orbit, we have a bunch of satellites, like uh, 300 satellites. And there is a problem because uh, as we manage signals, there are interference mm -hmm. with adjacent satellites. So getting more satellites into orbit will be a, def a, a, a big challenge, right? and with constellations even more. Um, because some frequencies that constellation used are very close to, for example, uh, 5G, uh, 5G uh, frequencies. So the coordination, it's a real challenge. And the, operat operator, the operators of both uh, satellites and uh, terrestrial networks uh, would have to sit together and discuss what, uh, what are the, the, the upcoming uh, coordination. Thank you, Miguel. We'll be back with more right after these messages. Well, sitting here and listening to uh, this interview really inspired me the aspect of the next generation and, you know, people like you. You, you are growing up and you grow up in a, uh, you know, a country who is in that's in development, a country that has a lot of challenges and difficulties and, and education barriers and things yeah. like that. But you were able to navigate and receive the best education. What would be the message to people that maybe have bigger and greater opportunities than you, what you had, to be able to pursue their dreams? You, you grew up in an environment that, you know, we as a Bolivians didn't even think that we can think about these type of things, right? Yeah. But you were able to make it. What is the message for people who are watching right now and tell them how they can make it, how they can do this, how they can make reality their dreams? Uh, for sure, it will be perseverance mm -hmm. because uh, I struggled uh, trying to find a, a scholarship because I didn't have the funds to, to pay a university in Europe. So I struggled like four years maybe to get a scholarship, but I never gave, gave up mm -hmm. because I received some uh, rejections from many universities and many organizations, but I have the goal right in front of me and I fought for, for, this, for this goal. And one important thing is uh, that God uh, helped me a lot in this, in this journey. Mm -hmm. uh, know, knowing that I had a, a purpose and, and God had a plan for me. And yeah, believing, uh, mm -hmm. believing in this was a, mm -hmm. a great refreshment, I, I think. And that's how I accomplished uh, all that I, mm -hmm. that I accomplished. Mm, sure. Yeah. And so when you went to study in France, did you already know French? Were the classes in French? Or? Yeah, well, it was kind of difficult mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I've never learned French. Mm -hmm. And French people don't usually uh, <laughs> like to speak in, in other languages than mm -hmm. French. Mm -hmm. So I was supposed to, to learn very quick to get out mm -hmm. and to, the, to a restaurant, for example. Sure. So I took some lessons um, and yeah, I, I managed uh, to, to continue with mm -hmm. my studies and, the f and French. Mm. So afterwards, I, I, could, uh, I could speak in, mm -hmm. in French. So you speak Danish? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I haven't been. Uh, you haven't used it in a while. I haven't been using it for a while, hmm. but I understand Danish and, and French. Yeah. And mm. going to study in another country like that, it, did it, I, and I'm just guessing here, but is it because uh, that seems incredibly hard, especially like you're, you're like a rocket scientist, right? And then, and already, and then you're going to go study that in another language. Is it, is, does it help that it's a lot of math, or am I kind of just assuming that and then it's not true? Yeah, I think it's m much easier 
to have uh, a lot of math because math in Bolivia and in France is the sure. same. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think it was much easier. Mm. And I love that. I love that, uh, Miguel, you exemplify uh, the next generation, a generation who is above and beyond borders. You understand mm. different cultures, different languages, and also you are ingrained in the technology and innovation. So now think about this, uh, and, and let me ask you this question, which I think is critical, is where do you see the future in terms of technology and innovation in general, not only in satellite, but in general? What, because I, you, you are brilliant, you, you have received a lot of training. Where is the future? What we are seeing, and we are more in, in, in artificial intelligence, what is happening? What is that? What is coming? Uh, well, I deeply believe that the future is uh, deep learning, machine learning, mm. Internet of Things, uh, that now are very uh, immature, I would say, but uh, the upcoming years is going to be uh, very huge. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, th I think that those three are, are going to, to be the main technologies that are going to be explode and uh, mm -hmm. very helpful for us. Mm -hmm. can, can you explain a little bit the difference between uh, you know, machine learning and, and deep learning? Uh, both are basically, basically the same. Uh, deep learning is the, 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 the scope of all this uh, branch and machine learning is part of deep learning, right? Okay. So it's uh, like a, a machine can learn automatically some, some patterns in, mm -hmm. in, in, in within the technology mm -hmm. so this will this uh, this will reduce the mm -hmm. use of uh, uh, human resources mm -hmm. uh, right that in artificial intelligence mm -hmm. that basically go with lo logarithmic systems and basically yeah. allow to create patterns of thinking and really be able to get the resources the data and the, the, the transformation that the machines were able to do, right? Yeah, and it I can handle a bunch of data mm -hmm. uh, within seconds. Right. Yeah. And that's the power, right? Oh the power sure. of transformation that is happening. And Miguel, mm -hmm. in your generation and the next generation, we'll see more and more that. And it's interesting to see that it's now global, right? We have a guest from Bolivia that they are experiencing a lot of those things mm -hmm. that we are seeing here in the United States. Right. And uh, let me finish. Uh, talk a little bit about Bolivia. There is some people who are saying, okay, where is Bolivia? What, tell us a little bit about your country, about Bolivia. Well, Bolivia is a South American country. Uh, we are, uh, <laughs> we, we have a geographically diverse, uh, we are a geographical di geographically diverse country. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, we are uh, very young as a, as a country because mm -hmm. we were uh, founded in 1825. Uh, well, now we are, we are having some political problems um, and it's a very tough moment in, in Bolivia with the president and other staff that, that is getting, uh, getting us on in in, in problems, um, yeah, we are now uh, entering in. An, it's a new transition for for Bolivia be because we are experiencing experiencing some changes. We try to be, um, uh, we try to develop new new technologies mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. like 5G. Mm -hmm. And uh, but. The most important thing is the, that these technologies are bringing a great capacity mm. building for the next generations. Mm. Uh, we have put a, 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 a whole nation into a new arena and we are able to talk about uh, these technologies in a developing country. Mm. So, yeah, that's a little bit about Right. No, it's Bolivia. an incredible country mm -hmm. with a lot of natural resources, sure. uh, yeah. the great potential. And again, uh, you know, Miguel, I think through your experience in and all the time that you have invested in developing the technology, I think you are transforming a country. 
and that's fundamental. And what an honor to have somebody like Miguel in this show, Julio. You know, I am always thinking about Costa Rica and other places. Mm -hmm. What we are seeing is, is this change, and technology really is helping us to be connected, to identify ways to improve production, and really be, be in markets and, and all mm -hmm. that. And yeah. probably in Costa Rica, you are experiencing the same sure, thing. And, right? the, and the ability to conduct business from anywhere, and, and you have you know, remote businesses like you do in Costa Rica, a lot of call centers, a lot of outsourced um, operations from, from other countries that are based anywhere in the world nowadays. As long as you have an educated workforce and the ways to get them connected, you, you can be part of the global market. It really is amazing. Miguel, what a great interview. Thank you so much for visiting Rochester. I am sure that uh, you will be learning a lot of what's going on in technology in Rochester. And I am sure also that through the work that you are doing in Bolivia, you will bring uh, better conditions of living for people, especially in the rural areas. Thank you for what you do and you have inspired us today. It's Thank a pleasure. You. Next week on Be Inspired, we'll meet Chris Spinelli, owner of Rock Brewery. To watch today's episode and the complete interviews of our guests, go to rochesterfirst.com slash be inspired. For more great talk with Rochester's entrepreneurs, listen to Bullet 97.1, Saturdays at 9 a.m. For Mauricio Rivero's, I'm Julio Sainz. We'll see you next week on Be Inspired.